he is the second, second person one. on the left on the lower rank. We'll be starting the interview in a few moments. Talk. This is September 14, 2014, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon in Colony, New York. Ken and June Hunter are interviewing Alfred Manty, who served in the United States Army beginning in 1939 until 1945. Please tell us, when and where were you born? Well, born? Yeah, what date were you born? April, April 7th, I think it was that when I was born. And, and it was the year 1921. Yeah. And where were you born? Uh, well, somewhere in Connecticut, I think. Oh, well. From what I got. Your son says it was Albany, New York. No, I wasn't born in Albany. I was raised there. In Albany. Okay, well, that's good. That's all right. Now, you went through grade school before you entered the service. And were you drafted or did you no, enlist? No, I wasn't drafted. Well, I'll tell you how it happened because I worked at uh, selling newspapers. Mm -hmm. And I go up Madison Avenue all the way up to Park Street or Park Street and I walk over and the, the, the theater was there. And I'd get in front of the theater. But I got that job in kind of the uh, military ice cream parlor next door to this, the movie house. Movie house. So I, they kept pe teasing me to get in the army, and and I would get out of here, get lost, and go, you know. But they finally coaxed me to join the army. It's National Guard. It's not army, but it's partly <coughs> partly army. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. It's the Guard, National Guard. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, uh, and so then uh, you went down and you enlisted in Albany? Yeah, I went and down there and I got, <laughs> got a job in the Guard. <laughs> and did you, uh, then I understand you went down to Fort Dix after that? <clears throat> what did you do at Fort Dix? I what? What did, what did you do in Fort Dix? Was that where your basic training was held? <laughs> I don't know, to be honest with you. <laughs> but, Do you remember anything about basic training? Um, oh, well, basic training was the same old baloney, you know. They take you out in the field and walk you and run you and do everything they can. They used to walk us 50 miles just for one day. And they boy, you had a hell of a time to get back. <laughs> tired. They always had a jeep right behind us to bring us back. Oh. And there. Uh, that was good. And then the, you had the drinking part of it, and you're with people that drink, and you're only 16, 17 years old, and you don't know what to drink. But you do drink after a while. <laughs> when you say drink, you must mean beer and beer or stuff, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, so yeah. you were a young man, and you got into yeah, this. I, I was think I was 17 when mm -hmm. I went in the yard. And did you uh, learn uh, any? Uh, Ammunition, how to shoot weapon, guns and all. How, how to handle so, weapons and the use well, of yeah, weapons. I learned, I learned that right there in the army. They taught you that. In my first army, my first deal, well, I'll never forget that. We was out one day. We had to go. We were going to go somewhere, and they were going to tell us that behave, you know, all that stuff. You know. Now watch what you're doing. Now, we warn people that you live in that area that you were going to be there. So they say, oh, we say, all right. So we uh, get in there, and they said, you'd shoot when they come around, but they, 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 they wouldn't be in there. So one night, they come to us, we had to go out, but be careful. They warned the people of the area that, that we were going to be there. So when we got there, somebody came running across the thing and stooped with me, went bang with a gun, you know. I never handled a gun. Well, my God, I was scared, scared. As I get up and I went and run down and see what happened or what. 
and the woman, about 80 years old, and I killed her with a bullet wound. I didn't know it. Oh, I, I, I thought I was going to die right there. <laughs> uh, boy, I, I thought they were going to die right there. 80 years old she was, I told me, and I shot her that night. Uh, she, she said, thank you, Dave. I said, I shouldn't have been there. <laughs> but that, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. The other parts are different. Things. We went over the hill with a different group of men. And so did you go anywhere, uh, I know you did, after Fort Dix? Fort Dix? Yeah, that's where... Well, you did the basic training. And now, yeah. did you... Uh, before we you go on oh, okay. uh, from there, in your days there, uh, do you remember the first haircut you got there? Uh, I'm sure it wasn't the kind of a haircut that you no, got well, in my Albany. My father used to give me my haircuts. Because he, he was a barber anyway. He used to cut my hair. And so that's, that's about all I can tell you. <laughs> How was the food? Do you remember? Was the food good? They give you a lot oh, to eat? The food was always good there in, mm -hmm. in the Army. That's one thing good about it. It was always good. And what about the barracks life? What was that like? Well, <laughs> it's kind of hard to say, man. Especially with a woman around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard everything. By yeah, now. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Imagine there was a lot of uh, close order drill, yeah. uh, rifle range training. Rifle training and machine gun training. Mm -hmm. That's where I got most of my machine gun training there. Mm -hmm. After you uh, left Fort Dix to go to your first duty station, where was that first duty station? Do they do they send you to, uh, to the west coast or to the well, down south? Down in the, I don't know. Where are the places in the army in the south? Uh, I can't think of it. It was down right out where you where you'll be picking you up. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm sure that uh, it oh, wasn't okay. all a life of uh, right. a, a fun life and all. But there was a lot of hard things to go on. Okay, and uh, I mean, just on the chance of it, you were transferred from Fort Dix down to Fort McClellan. I understand. At your next post, what was military life like there? Was there additional weapons training? Yeah. When, what was it like uh, when you moved well, on? It all depends on what kind of weapons you had. I mean, the rifle wasn't too bad. I found in the, the I mean, you had a rifle with you, that was fine. But was it had, an M16? Yeah, they taught you how to, how to handle it. And you had to learn how to strip the thing down almost oh, yeah, blindfolded. And they, 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 they take sure good care of it out. They always did that. What about the military inspections? Did you have any of those to go through? We have, well, we had our own inspections, you know. In the company, they come around looking at your, your work and see what, if they find a dirty pot or dirty something, then they let you know about it and have you do it over again. Now that's uh, kind of you know, that's, those were, that goes way back. <laughs> What yeah, about KP? Good. Do you remember oh, having that to do is a, that? Is, that's great. Mm -hmm. I've had more time in KP than you could shake a stick at. <laughs> I imagine you <laughs> had your share of potatoes, uh, oh, potato peeling, with potatoes, you know, mm -hmm. swapping yeah, the decks. Uh, I, oh, that was terrible. I remember the one time we were out, two of us were, we were out, we went over the hill. We're coming down this hill and we hear this beep, 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 beep. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's match time at 1.30. We'll be having church service in the south. And I'll tell you a story. We stopped there to see who was blowing the horn out of us. And so we got out and he drove up and he looked. He said, well, did you fellas have a nice trip? It was my first sergeant and another fellow there were together. And then we get down there and said, beep, beep, beep. Get in the car, get back to the pan. We went in front of the, in front of the captain, I mean, not the captain, yeah, the captain of the company. And he says, uh, what are we doing, Sergeant? 
He said, well, we'll tell my widow, give him a job digging ditches out in the back. And they put me, put me in digging holes. My God, I never thought of somebody thinking of that many holes in my life. We bought it to So that's how we got through with that. But he said, did you have a good time, fellas? We were gone for two days. <laughs> and I thought well, that was tough. And I had a couple of good times we had. Now we I don't know, even know that. He's there now. now we know that. Um, After Fort McClellan, uh, I imagine you were prepared to go for an overseas assignment. When I get back home, yeah. Okay. What happened after Fort McClellan? Did you go to Did you go overseas into the Pacific? After I came home from from service, I mean, you know, Fort McClellan. You came home for a short period of time for a leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how much leave did they give you? About seven days. <laughs> Not quite, but five days. So you went to Saipan. And then from after the after there. you came back from leave and reported back to the military. What happened then? Well, you get my name ain't that good. <laughs> okay, you went to... When did you go to Saipan? When did you go to where? <laughs> oh, Hawaii. Oh, I might, okay, so you, you left the Hawaii. States and you went on your way for your next deployment, which took you to Hawaii. I'm sure that uh, you had a lot of fun dancing around with the hula hula girls. Oh, I can tell you something. That we were out one time. We went over that over the hill. We went out into the village or into the town. Oh, you know, get up there and we're sitting on the curb store. And the woman comes up. She says, "What are you fellas doing here?" We just said, "We're just a good thing going to get the movies." No, no, no. And I said, this is my theater. You don't go in there. I said, I said she said, where are you from? She, I said, oh, we're from Albany, New York. Oh, so am I. She owned the, the what you call it, the burlesque show up there in Albany. <laughs> she was, <a, laughs> I'll never forget that one. She got that burlesque show up and took us inside and showed us, oh dear, it was scary. And not to say, it was scary, but it was funny. <laughs> So I, that's, that's one part of my life. But we managed pretty well. It's just a company that I was with. A very good outfit. Okay, yeah. now we know that you did have combat service. Mm. Where did you go for it? Where, where was that? Do you remember? Yeah. When you left Hawaii, did you go out to... Uh, did you fly over to... Or did you take a troop well, ship? stole a lot of that stuff. <laughs> good. You took a troop ship to go across the Pacific? I don't know what it was. I imagine it was, yes. I'm very, very confused. I imagine, I'm a very confused person. I imagine it wasn't uh, a, lu a luxury ship that uh, you were all packed in there together. <laughs> yeah. What was it like? Did you get seasick? Well, you showed up over them, too. <laughs> and it worked out pretty well. I can remember I got sick a couple of times over the, over the side of the coast. <laughs> and then um, find out. Okay, and the troop ship, where did the troop ship take you? Lake Park. Then where did the troop ship take you? Out into the Pacific? Uh, what, yeah, yeah, what, in the Pacific. Uh, what, uh, what island were you headed for? I don't know. I don't was in Okinawa and Saipan. Marshals. How did you how did you get from the troop ship to those? Did you uh, well, I transfer you in. Uh, they always had a, a ship there. Uh, LST. Uh, you always all, all, all climbed over the yeah, side onto an yeah, LST. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I, I don't know. It's very confusing. But if we managed. Uh, these guys were different. These guys, well, they were the same. Uh -huh. Most of them arrived from this area. Now, when it's our understanding, you were wounded in Saipan. What was what was the duty like in Sa Saipan? What did we do? What did you do there? How how soon did, how soon did you engage I, the enemy? 
I think it was on the Japs on my side man. And mm -hmm. we tried to get him out of there. So we did the best we could. I guess we did get him out eventually. But I, I don't know. But what was it like uh, when you landed in Saipan? <laughs> Not the, the nicest thing in the world. You look around and see a lot of dead bodies around. Uh, you, know, well, you don't know what the hell's going on, excuse me. That's all right. You, you don't read that body, you look around and you say, oh, look at that mess over there. So that must have been rather frightening. It was, uh, you know, I found it uh, when I stayed, when I got out of it, I didn't want to go back to it. But I was stupid because I could have stayed in the Army. I think I would have been better off. My life was going to be better. But after I got home and got married, I forget. I forgot I was going to get, I was married to an Irishman. <laughs> You couldn't do anything wrong there, but she right on you. Now I understand you. How were you wounded when you were over there? I understand. You were wounded in Saipan. Yeah. Do you remember what your injury was, or how long you were there? Well, I, well, no, I, I that sort of forget, but it wasn't too long. I put me in a hospital, and I started started complaining about different things. It wasn't the kind of a hospital that we know today. It was what in oh, a no, tent. Oh no, isn't anything like it today. What was it like uh, in that hospital? Did, he, did you get good care? Oh yes, 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 indeed. Come on in, Charlie. No. <laughs> come on. No. Oh, come in, just to say hello. That's all right. <laughs> now, um, so do you remember? Were your injuries serious or? No. Well, no. Yes and no. The one hit me here. Mm -hmm. That's that bothers me now and then, mm -hmm. and one up in here mm -hmm. in the shoulder, remember, but, uh, in the shoulder mm -hmm. area and the hip area. Yeah. And how? And did you? Did they send you uh, to a troop ship uh, for for, for a, a ship. hospital ship a for a, a tr for additional troop treatment? Uh, troop ship they sent us in. Mm -hmm. And uh, and how long did you have to stay in the hospital uh, area? Oh, I was there about two weeks. That's all. And they sent you back on the line? Mm -hmm. What happened when you went back on the line? Uh, they sent me back to uh, training you, over again. With, your, with the same group that you went, were with? Yeah, pretty close. And, and did you lose many of your uh, fellow... Uh, yes, I lost a couple of good friends. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I missed a fellow that from Nassau, Robert Bailey, his name was. Him and I was always together. And then when I got home, I tried to go to go to see him. I met him then, and we had some good times together. And then, but after that, he got married, and he got hit. He died. Oh, that's about no. It. No, no, while you were out in the field, how did uh, you take care of yourself? Or for, did you have to use the helmet to wash uh, and shave your helmet, your steel helmet? <laughs> oh God. Them things, I'll never forget them. You just put them over and put them on your chin, and they go up, 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 and down on you. You'd be running or something like that, and you'd be going this and that, and they pop up and down. <laughs> but it, they ran pretty good. I understand you uh, had a situation with a snake. Oh, yes, 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 that snake. Well, that was a funny one. It wasn't funny, but it was, it was there. Funny when you look back. <laughs> I was in the, uh, in the foxhole, and all of a sudden I'm, I felt this. I felt this thing wrapping around me. I looked, and there's a snake. You know, the snake's wrapped around my chest. Holy God! I thought I started to scream. Some of the guys that were with us said, "Come on, you guys, you got to get rid of this thing, and to be careful. Don't shoot them because I'm here. I was there all along." So they, uh, the next one, I stayed all night and that snake was squeezing me all night. I'll never forget that. And you I was, hate snakes. Didn't, uh, obviously it didn't kill you. It could have if um, it got too tight. And I, I hate snakes. I, I, I think of that every time I see a snake. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 
But, uh, now back to, you said the snake, snake uh, was coiled around you. Uh, How did they get rid of the... Yeah. the they, up, they shot them. They shot them. They didn't, they got up. If I remember right, they come up when, uh, I don't know if they shot them or they had their rifles with, or their knives on them and snapped their heads off or something. And oh, it was a mess. <laughs> you were very fortunate not to have yeah. bitten, uh, been bitten by the snake. I, he never bit me. He, he never, he so didn't it bite me. But oh, squashes that's you. an awful feeling on it. When mm -hmm. I seen her come, and when my kids were little, when they were first born, and they were, my wife would buy them a snake or along the line with her. And I'd say, get that snake out of here. They can ask these two boys because I get mad. Yeah, I'm scared <laughs> I, I, I couldn't ever stand seen. a snake. Yeah, if I, I see a snake, that. I run. I still do. I still get nowhere near them. Yeah. Well, we're lucky up here in the Northeast. We don't have the poison. That's what well, I said. We don't have it up in here. Okay, now tell us about the squad leaders you had. The what? Your squad, squad? leader. Your oh, squad well, leaders. Yeah, they, were, they were pretty good. They were nice fellows. How big a squad were you in? Well, that's hard for you to say now. But Seven, eight men? Oh, there was, yeah, pretty close to ten men. Ten men. Uh, Ellie! Hi, Hi, And then... Because somebody just waved So up. were your squad leaders good people, watched out for you, or were they? Yeah, in a roundabout way. What were, what were your meals like out there? I'm sure you didn't get deluxe meals. You probably had well, to eat it, sea rations. Yeah, well, the K rations. K rations. Big, that was a big deal in them days. The K what, rations. What was in the K ration? Mm -hmm. What kind of food was in the K ration? Well, I think it was corn broken up. I don't know what you're saying. But I think it was mashed potatoes. Excuse me. I think it was mashed potatoes. But, uh, a little bit of meat. Notice the word uh, think. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> well, she always is right because she's a woman. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and it, <clears throat> at those times, I guess the K rations came with uh, cigarettes. And, uh, I never smoked. Well, I did smoke a little bit, but uh, uh -huh. until I got in the army, but when I when I got home, I could give up the cigarettes. I, I said no more cigarettes, and I didn't. I haven't had a cigarette now in oh, 20 years, pretty close to it. I didn't give up. <laughs> I bet you're like, glad you gave that up. Yes, you? yes, yes, yes. But I so wasn't you. That so you received the Purple Heart. Tell about that. Well, yeah, I got, I got one somewhere along the line. Yeah. <laughs> the Purple Heart came in uh, probably in later years after you got out of the service, or did they uh, give a presentation while you yeah, were? Yeah, they always had a met. They always had a group together. And when you had, when you received the Purple Heart, they'd get you get in each one of them. They'd call your name out. You know. Give it in, you put it on mm -hmm. your head. Understand uh, you also got a, a, a Bronze Star Award. Can you tell us what you did, to, or how you earned the Bronze Star? All I can think of is that we fought, on, uh, fought with some people that we, sh we could do that with. You know, these people from the South, they were tough. They drink your rear, drink, drink until you were blue, and we get drinking and driving. And, yeah, it was terrible, but it wasn't bad. That's right about way. But I don't know how I can help you much, but <laughs> I like to. But. Now you mentioned um, we've talked with other men that talked about the um, black servicemen. Did you have black servicemen with you in, and how in your they were group? Black people? Negro, Negro troops? Oh, no, no. Were they, say, they were segregated? No, we didn't have any black people then. Yeah, because they uh, often and, speak how yeah. they were segregated, separated. Yeah, it was after the war started that mm -hmm. they came up. Mm -hmm. Now, how were the 
how was the corpsman that, that treated you? Were the, did you get good service from the corpsman? Oh, I sure did. Yeah. The combat corpsman there? Yeah, I kept staring up as a private. I didn't want to go any, I don't know if the difference between a corpsman and a private. But not that it wasn't paid. I didn't mind it. It, it, it grew up. I, I smartened up. But I should have went. <laughs> I should have stayed in it. I would have, because had had a good pension plan. For Did you get any promotions while you were out in the in the combat zone? Just the one. That made me a sergeant. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Made a staff sergeant. Uh huh. So he was in five years. Yeah. And I brought that home with me. And what made you not re-enlist in the service? You mentioned in some ways you wish you had stayed in. Oh yes, I had that when I went to Fort McClellan. They send you down to Fort McClellan, you know, and they say you you want to stay in, and you, you just sit back and say, mm -hmm. <coughs> "No, excuse me." I say no, because I want to get home. Get home in a hurry, because I didn't have anything home to get to. My mother and father were still alive, but time I got home, I couldn't. I didn't have much more money, and I didn't get along with my father too well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I fought like cats and dogs. So then, uh, <coughs> did you meet your wife while you were in the service, or afterwards? <coughs> yeah, he was with it. Because he was a, he was a hairdresser. He cut he had cut hair. Mm -hmm. and he worked at WPA to make money. Now, from Sai from Saipan, did you go to any other theaters of war? Any other Saipan, landing sites? Saipan. Trying to think. Saipan. Saipan. Then where we go from there? You went back on a troop ship to get from... Oh, yeah, from, we, to, we did that. We went from Saipan to somewhere else. Okinawa. 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 Uh -huh. And what was, it like, what, was, what was it like on Okinawa? Worse than uh, it was at Saipan? Well, I can't... I don't know. Yes, I think so, because they were they tried to get Saipan better, because it was better transportation for them. But they weren't too bad. And they were nice people, and them. them Chinese, or <laughs> what call And were they helpful to you? Like, how how did you meet up with the Chinese people? Uh, and no, they were, they were better than we are. Um, that was days when you're young and foolish. Now you're just mm -hmm. foolish. <laughs> right. And so, uh, how did you meet with the Chinese people? Or, well, I knock a couple of them around a while and then they meet with them. I said, oh, we used to do it. <laughs> Did you have a, any experiences where you took prisoners, Japanese prisoners? Oh, well, we, I didn't have, we didn't have much problems with them. Uh, I remember, you know, the Japanese, uh, they were tough. They were tough people. I remember coming down. They had one they call a bonsai attack. They have about 50, 60 people coming after you, and you're standing there with a machine gun. You're trying to get rid of them. And that was our first big one. I think that was Okinawa. And oh my God. You run and you walk out and there's these, all these dead Chinese people. Japanese. Japanese, you know, oh God. You had wave after wave well, of them. I had. I was a mortar operator. My 81 millimeter mortar. I used to run on that. I ran that. We had. We had quite a thing. That's, that's a were ball. you were you a loader? Oh yes. Yeah. You had one. You had a couple of men with you. I had two men with you. You had one to drop the the, the thing in the tube. And get back, and they come up and back it, back in, hit you, and didn't hit you. So you stay away from it. Oh, the mortars were good, but they were heavy. <laughs> they were, 
They were real heavy, bro. They weighed them ton, I think. You had to you had to carry your own weapon, oh, yeah, yeah. munitions, you and your own, you carried your own metal. And your equipment did it oh. uh, usually work well for you? Wherever you went, you had that equipment with you. And it was and worked well for yeah, you then. Yeah, that's been a long time ago. <laughs> right. yeah. Now, can you remember what uh, what payday was like, or did you have to wait till you got back to the well, states? I, you know, when I first started, it was only twenty-one dollars a month. Uh, twenty-one dollars a month at seventeen, and you put two beds a, a sneeze on. So we get down and we get there and oh boy, yeah, played uh, cards and dice. Yeah, excited and the end. It's gone. All of a sudden, it's gone, huh? Now yeah, it wasn't bad, but you know that's quite a hard thing to do. Remember that thing. You do remember certain things, but most of it is uh, forgotten. I try to make it that way. Well, it's probably just as well when you've seen some of the things you've seen in war that you can. Forget. Now, when you were when when payday came, they didn't give you regular. U.S. money. They gave you military scrip. It wasn't the regular dollar bills or five dollar bills. It was what the well, military. Geez, I, to be honest with you, I can't tell you. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. I know it was, it was never a check. Uh, you know, I, but what it was, I don't know. I, I, and them days, I was drinking cigarettes and drinking beer and all that. You, you didn't last long when you got drinking. When you had periods of when there was no. Uh, fighting going on, did, uh, did you have any USO shows come over there, entertainment? Hollywood stars or...? Oh, yes, 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 yes. We met one woman sometime, we were, as I said, we, I was sitting on the curb, and when that woman told me she was a, from Albany, told us, I shouldn't say me, she, was, she had ran a burlesque show here in Albany. Uh, right up level. So she took us inside to show her by last show. Well, that's about that. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't have any shows with Jerry Colonna, Bob Hope, or? No, no, uh, no. No. Are there any special things that you found funny that happened to you in the <laughs> service? Any, did you ever play jokes on your fellow guys to lighten no, the mood uh, or anything? No. Yeah. See, there I am right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll show this at the, at the conclusion of um, the interview here, but to go over this, uh, you served in World War II in the U.S. Army. You were in uh, from 1939 to 1945. Yeah. That's a... Six years. Mm -hmm. Pretty long time, and uh, you were a heavy mortar NCO. And your locations were all through the Western Pacific. Yeah, I don't know. but I didn't get some of the money they say have or uh -huh. pay. Yeah, I remember you. Mm -hmm. Now I see you have two purple hearts. Yeah, you get you were you received you two purple hearts twice. Oh. You received. I tell guess us. they gave me a purple heart or something. I don't know what it was for. Him. I can't remember. Well, he got shot. Shot, side, I got shot in the chest. Well, you, you get one purple heart, heart and one that. engagement, yeah, you one so you had to get a there. second purple heart and another engagement. Well, one time we went off a, we were riding a, a car, a truck. We were going somewhere with this truck, and it went over, over the cliff with two or three other guys. And we got through that one, but we got a purple heart for that. Somewhere along on. But you didn't get injured? No, no. Where did that happen? In Japan? Or well, it could be. Or any place? I have not any pain, really. Mm-hmm. You, you weren't, you, uh, you didn't proceed to, for the occupation of Japan? Did you go to there? Did you go to Japan? Yeah, yeah, I went to Japan. You were in the occupation forces over in Japan? Uh, yeah, they weren't, they weren't too much. By chance, did you happen to see uh, General MacArthur at any time? No, I don't think so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Didn't see any of them. Did you have any contact uh, 
with the U.S. Marines who were also fighting. Oh, yes, yes. We uh, were always, always picking on one another. And, Pick up the oh, damn Marines. Or and, and, <laughs> and called them, called them by their favorite name, Jarheads. And they do something, they get them come outside, get up there. We got one right here. She's a woman. I look at her, come on, Sarge, get your foot moving. <laughs> that makes her mad at me. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I stay away from her now. <laughs> uh, they, they, they were good days. As you, as uh, things, do you remember when the war was officially declared over? Where were you when it was on the way home? On the way uh, from, home. From where? Uh, well, let's see where I was. Well, I don't know because they put. I was. We was out on the day. We was. I tell you where they were. Uh, we were. They come to me one night. Come on, Sarge. You gotta. You're going home. Oh boy, this is great. So I run and run up. And they put me in the car and send me somewhere. They threw me in a boat. Or not a boat, but a ship. They took to get me back to Florida. So they took me there, and they're gonna. Oh dear. You had to earn a certain number of points to be able to come back. Thing. No, I, yes, I think it was. I, I'm not sure. I enough points. They just won some kind of a point. So I got home. I come on down, and they put me in a, in a boat, and not a boat, but in a truck, a car, and a train that put me up and shipped me home. And that made a difference. I was happy. So they give me to the home, and they take me in. They want to give me an interview. They want to. Organized, say you want to re enlist or something like that. I had, I said, no, I was anxious to get on, which I made a mistake there. I should have stayed the hell of the army. <laughs> I would have been better off. <laughs> and you guys, you should know that. So, now, where was you? home at that time for you? <laughs> it was. Where did the, where was home for you? Well, in Albany. Okay, came in back my, to Albany yeah. then. Yeah, and I just had my mother and father with me. Right. And then when I got home, I met this other woman. And we got married, mm -hmm. and I, this is what this is. What this was. <laughs> you had two sons. Yeah, had two. Yeah, had two sons. And did you? Oh, three uh, sons. Right, three sons. Three I'm sons. Sorry, three sons. You didn't have girls. Just no girls. Okay. Well, and my did wife you? Always wanted a girl, but she never got it. <laughs> well, sometimes they're harder to raise. <laughs> But did you, um, then did you get it, I assume you got a job to work in. Oh, yeah. Where did you work? Oh, I worked different places. For a while, I got, I went to over the Yen Lee home, mm -hmm. over in Rensselaer, and I piled up by different things. Mm -hmm. And was, then, um, did you work somewhere else besides that? Oh, I've been working, I've worked all over the place, worked in. That. Was it easy to get a job in that day when you got out of the service? I imagine, yes, I think it did help. Uh, so then, uh, let's see, where, well, I, you were also a bartender, right? Well, that was later on in my life. Well, I was after, that's what you did after the service. <laughs> and that then, didn't uh, turn out too good either. <laughs> and then I uh, you know. dear, dear, I was sent to Orchard Grill. Yeah. Ten years. Ten years. Now, looking back to to before you came back to the states, um, were you still overseas when you heard about the dropping of the atomic bombs over in Japan? Well, yes, I was a little concerned about it. I was wondering what was going to happen again. Are you worried about it? What was the general feeling of, uh, among? Your fellow soldiers there uh, glad to hear that it happened uh, and that the war was over that much quicker? I, I think so. I don't know. Not right now, I listen to these things now, and I say, well, they're looking for another war. And I said, I said, how do you know that? I heard it. They said, uh, Pearl Harbor, not Pearl Harbor. Korean War, yeah, and then the Vietnam War. Yeah, I said, there we go after another war. 
And t mm -hmm. today I do the same thing, because they get telling me, telling these different things that they go through. Uh, Did you have any regrets of, about leaving the service? Oh, no, no, no. My, I figure my life is good. As long as I'm alive, don't rub my eyes every morning, that's fine. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, you've had a good My life. eyes were wake up, open up, I was fine. What was uh, the general reaction when you came back to the States? How did people greet you? Were, were you welcomed back to the States? Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, we were the first, one of the first ship uh, airlines to come back to the state at the end of the war. It was real good fun. A lot of people get out there, they cheer and they holler when you got off that boat. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was terrible. It was good, but it was terrible. Too. Mm -hmm. Were you still in the service when World War II was officially declared over? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, do you remember what it was like when it was announced that the war was over? We were on board, we was on the way home. And we was on board ship, and that's, uh, I thought that the ship was going to sink for it. it because, you know, they announced it over the radio that the war was over and they're going to... And when they did that, they said, that's what we thought the boat would trip over. They were going to cheer so much, you know. Yeah. So and they went, they and went where out. did you uh, come in? San Francisco? Yeah, we came in to Frisco. Mm -hmm. uh, can you they should be about to call me. Can you look back, re recall back today's uh, holidays, like Thanksgiving and Christmas, did they... Uh, did the army provide any special well, Thanksgiving time, meals, did, yeah. and Christmas meals? If you had somewhere to go, they say, or to go home to, they'd say, go ahead and go. Excuse me. But they give you tickets and put you on the plane. It was uh, pretty good. Uh, were, do they have religious services conducted? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes. They have religious. And they had Catholic and Protestant, Jewish. And with, yeah. and the fellow and your fellow soldiers all took part in you know, oh, yeah. the services. Yeah. When you came back uh, for the to get mustered out, what was it like to be mustered out? <laughs> well, uh, to be honest, you know, I look back and I'd say, "You, you how damn fool! Excuse my language. But why do you want to get out? Stay in." And I said, "No, uh, I said I had nowhere to go home to, but my mother and father, and that's all they had. There's nobody there." Oh, because I mean, the father didn't get along that well with me anyway. <laughs> so, so uh, did you ever uh, join any organizations like the VFW or American Legion? Yeah, Legends? I joined, yeah, uh, yeah, American Legion, right? I, American Legion, I joined them for quite a while. I'm still with them. I, mm -hmm. I get by. Did you ever have any occasions of military reunions with your old uh, sh no. soldier mates? No. Mm -hmm. Now, when when you must when you mustered out, uh, the, did they provide you with uh, transportation me home? Took me on a train and sent me up home. Did uh, you did they give you the tickets, or did you have yeah, to buy your own tickets out of mustering out? Get, out of, get on the train, so they never asked for any tickets or anything. I say, I'll go, I'm getting out of here. And I said, then I get halfway up, and I said, maybe I'm crazy going home. <laughs> but as I got home, I said, well, too late now to worry about it. So I stayed, stayed in the air. So you saw the memorial in Washington, D.C.? Yeah. The World War II? What was that like for you? You must have been happy they finally built one. <laughs> and tell us about your visit there. Yeah. Do you remember? Did you go out of Albany on an airplane, or? Huh? I don't know who I did. Uh, I don't think you I don't think bus. so. Oh, a bus you had. You had a bus to go down there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he went down to the bus. You went mm -hmm. down on the bus. You went to the bus. I believe you went to the people of Zaloga Post. <laughs> yeah, it was the Zaloga Post of the American Legion that yeah. Mm -hmm. You went down as a patriot, and uh, so you went down with a busload of other people. Uh, yeah, well, I enjoy American Legion because I, you get out there, see people, and talk with them. You, know? mm -hmm. and you have a good time with them. Yeah. yeah. A good time. 
you talk a lot about the service when you're together or other things? I used to for a while, but now it's sort of whipped off a little bit. Yeah. You don't hear much anymore. Right. Uh, the, okay. One, the hardest thing we're seeing today in uh, Legion posts and uh, uh, the VFW is the younger fellows aren't going in. They, uh, <laughs> they don't seem to have uh, oh, the feeling of yeah. w wanting to join. I, I miss it all. I wouldn't have. It's hard for me to say what I do, but, yeah. but right now I don't think I'd be allowed to go anywhere. Yeah. When you look at the state of uh, things, uh, what's going on in the world now with the young fellows uh, uh, and young women today being in there, what are your feelings uh, for, for them? Well, I always respect the woman because I think the war being ended made the war ended. I think the women's made a good job of keeping it going because they if it wasn't for the war. The women, I don't think the government would have them pockets that they stole with the numbers got by. Mm -hmm. I think the woman is the one who won the war for my. I've always said that because mm -hmm. I think a lot of women bad. took over jobs that uh, yeah, they were normally bad. held by men. And they, were even and they did just as good a job, and if not better. Yeah, they were even flying mm -hmm. airplanes for a while. Mm -hmm. Well, that's about it. All right. Well, we thank you very much for serving our country. Now, if we wish uh, you well, mm, and we'll show we'll this. We'll show this uh, plaque that you have. Uh, uh, I appreciate it. I'll just what, put it there on that thing. This I wanted to keep. Okay. Now hold it up so we can t include it in the interview. Yeah, and put with, how about like that with his him in the background like that? Yeah, I got it. Okay. We thank you for your service. 